Welcome back to our study in the book of Psalms. We will be looking at Psalm 127 today. This is one of the Ascension Psalms, and I'll give you some background on that right after the title. Uh, this is about God as my home builder, although it will talk about uh, the city. Uh, it mainly has to do with children and the Lord and our homes. It's a short psalm, and uh, this is the overall outline of the book of Psalms. You can see how it breaks out. I always make comment that in the Hebrew Bible, they have five books uh, that make up the, the book of Psalms. Uh, we put them all together. And our introduction is this. Uh, these 15 Psalms, and we're just about in the middle of them, uh, are called the Ascension Psalms, or the Hebrews uh, would just call them the Ascents, uh, the Going Up Psalms. Uh, you, all, you may also see at the beginning, before verse 1, um, of your psalm in the Bible, it may say a song of degrees or of degrees, and think of degrees as being a thermometer and the temperature going up. So there, there's, an, there's ascending, there's going up. These psalms were sung basically going up to Jerusalem. And we're not talking going north, we're talking about going in, in elevation, going up. And uh, Jerusalem was part of the Mount Zion mountain. So uh, that may give you a little bit of understanding of this. So when did they really s sing these? And uh, it's important to know they still sing them today. Uh, they initially were sung by the Hebrews, by the Jewish people, as they returned from the Babylonian captivity. Uh, they were also sung and can be sung today by the Hebrews as they journey to Jerusalem for it was primarily three Jewish feasts every year. And so to prepare their hearts, to let the time go by quicker as they were walking, they would sing these as they would move towards Jerusalem and ascend towards Jerusalem in height. And then we also know that the Levite, the priests, as they would climb the steps of the temple, there were 15 steps going up, and they would sing or recite one of, one of these on each of the steps. And so these are very interesting ones, and so far they've been very short. Uh, Solomon wrote this uh, psalm, and this is the only one he wrote, and it is in the prescript. It tells us that up front. And so the back story, usually I have a story that gives us context and the date, etc. cetera. Um, I think what that I would share with you is this, that we find the Lord portrayed in a different way, how he comes to us and who he is to us in each of these psalms. And you can see it starts off with God is my deliverer to today. Uh, God is my home builder and everything in between. So if you look that, that list over and if there's something specific that you're going through in life and one of those fits the bill, uh, I'd encourage you to get your Bible out and read that psalm. And if you want to listen to uh, my video of it, it is available. And uh, hopefully when you're listening uh, to this one, um, all the rest of them will be done and up. But that's going to, if it's, you're following with me week by week, then you're going to need to wait a little bit. Anyway, let's get into this. It's a short psalm, five verses, and it, the first thing is about our home, uh, that God is the builder of my home. And it's a personal psalm. We need to take this personally. Also then, we know that God is the builder of my hopes. So some really good verses here. There's familiar verses here to you. And I hope that uh, sharing some of the Hebrew with you will give you some insights and open a window to greater understanding of what the Lord's sharing with us. Once again, Lord is Jehovah, uh, the existing one. And so it says, except the Lord, 
uh, Jehovah build the house. The word build here in the Hebrew means to build or establish. Establish is a much better word. It, it, unless the Lord establishes the house and understand that he continues to establish it, he continues to build it. It's an ongoing, uh, it's action that's ongoing. Then he says, if the Lord's not involved in that, then they say, mom and dad, you're going to pretty much labor in vain to try to build it. Uh, and labor is your toils and your efforts are going to be empty. Uh, if you don't have the Lord to get your instructions and, and your love and mercy, and yet the ground rules for parenting is found in the Word of God, um, you can work at it all you want, but it come, it'll come up empty. Your children will come up empty. And I think they're the ones that pay for it the most. And yes, I can say people that never go to church, never have known the Lord, and want nothing to do with God can do biblical things, and their kids turn out right. And God's people go to church all the time and take their kids and love the Lord. Their kids can take off and go and just walk away from it all. And that's, so, that's really so tragic. Keep in mind, they have a will of their own, but it is our desire in our hearts that we be the right example for the Lord. All right, then there's another statement is here. Except the Lord keep or he guards the overall city, the watchman or the guard uh, wakes up in vain. So unless the Lord is part of the city, and part of the, I could, I, I almost see that he's talking about families and then he's talking about nations, um, which is a bigger grab, or the town we live in, if you want to take it liberally or literally. And that the God's people, you need to unite one with the other to pray for each other's kids and wisdom in raising our children. I think maybe that might be the best admonition that I could get, give coming out of this. Then it goes on to say it's vain. Remember, vain means empty, hollow. It's hollow for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved sleep. All right, so the front part of the verse is, Mom and Dad, do you worry about your kids? And it says it's it's really empty for you to to get up early just to fret and to stew and it's really not wise to, to sit up late and worry about your kids. Commit them to the Lord. Do the best you can as a parent with God's word in your, in your hand and uh, an example in the other in your life um, and the Lord will give you good sleep. The word sorrow is hurt or pain or sorrows. It's rightly translated, but hurt. And we do know that our children can hurt us uh, by their actions. All right, here's uh, God is the builder of my hopes in verses 3, 4, and 5. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. Now he's talking about kids. First of all, it's an illusion about our home. But now our home has kids. And he talks about children specifically. And he wants to let us know that they're an inherited, a heritage or an inheritance. That they are from the Lord. And believe it or not, the heritage can be translated property. Ah, in the culture we live in, the government thinks that children belong to them. The public school system, many of those teachers and administrators think that, they're, that your children belong to them, that they know better than you. That is not biblical. Your, the children are your property. They are yours to raise. Also, the things that you buy and that your children have, they are your property too. Really, your kids don't own anything. It's uh, all because of you. When it comes down to anything legal, you own it all. Number four, and by the way, take care of your property. 
take care of your, the inheritance God has given you. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. All right, we understand a, a bow and arrow, and a mighty man is a man who can really shoot and not just have accuracy, but has strength for distance, to go, to go the distance. And parents, we've got to go the distance. Um, I'm, I was talking to another grandparent, which I am, um, and we have this conversation, and it comes up often among my friends. We, parenting never stops. We still have children. And even though they're married and we are grandparents or great-grandparents, we still are parents and we parent. Um, and we've got to go the distance. And it's, I think I ran across this. I don't know where it came from, but I put this as a note. Our children end up where we point them. Think about that. Where we point them, they're, they're going to go that direction. Might be, not be dead on exactly as you want it to, to turn out, but they're going, if you point them and raise them in love and strength and admonition and di the discipline and in, in a godly home and make sure you get into a good church, point them the right way. And then lastly, it says, as happy or blessed is the man that has his quiver full of them, um, that it being kids, uh, they shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Okay, what's this about? Okay, happy is the man that has children, plural. How many? We don't know. How, how much is a quiver full? I don't know. But, do you, you know, if I was out hunting or I was in battle, I'd at least want one, one arrow in, in my quiver. I'd at least I'd like to get one shot off on the enemy or or what I'm, whatever it is I'm doing with my bow and arrow. But if I had a big full one, that obviously would be better. What it's talking about, and they shall not be at shame, but they will speak with the adversaries in the gate. That's a, that was, the gate was a place of public business. All legal transactions went on there. Um, and the buying of land and dis legal discussions, um, court cases would be heard there by judges so that everybody could be part of it and everybody could hear. Um, we were in the city of Corinth on a Bible, a Holy Land trip, and went to the old city and noticed where the Bema seat was um, and noticed that it seemed to be where the city gates was. So that's where the judge sat and ruled once again, so that everybody would, would be part of that, could witness that. And so our kids can become representatives of us as defenders of our battles that we fight, and perhaps even in litigation. Um, it's not bad to have a child that's an attorney in this day and age. Um, if, I could, if I could have... Uh, a few kids, I would want one an attorney, one a, a lawyer, one a doctor, and I think I would like to have one that's an accountant, if I could have three. And they had to be out in the business world. But that's dreaming. And uh, I have a daughter, and she does wonderful things. is incredible. Her husband does too. So this is what this is about. Um, is there a bottom line? Is there one statement to close with? Um, you know, if you're a parent, be consistent. Just try to be consistent. You're going to fail and admit it, but try to be consistent in your living and uh, walk with God and lead your family. And if I can help you in any way, here's my email address. Um, 128 is up next, and these are the folks that have, that have sort of helped in my study and preparation for these psalms. Lord, thank you so much for your word, and Father, we know it is a great book for so many things, and it's wonderful. It's a great instruction book 
on how to rear children and also how mom, uh, husbands and wives are to act and how to be, how moms and dads should be. And so we thank you for these words of instruction and words of encouragement today. Help our homes, save our homes, give us strong hopes in our children. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.